Hello everyone, I am Vijay Kadve and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to understand the Azure Databricks cluster configuration. Here, I will walk you through each and every setting of the Databricks cluster in detail and it will really help you to optimize your Databricks cluster. And do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Let us understand the Azure Databricks cluster configuration. So here I am on the Azure portal. Go to Azure Databricks service. This is the workspace we have created. Databricks-WS. Launch the workspace. So this is the Azure Databricks workspace. Go to compute. There are two compute types in Databricks. All-purpose compute and job compute. You can create all-purpose compute manually, but you cannot create the job compute manually. The job compute is created when the job is created. Now click on the create compute. So this is the cluster configuration for the all-purpose compute. From here we can select the name for the cluster. I'll select cluster underscore zero one. On the right hand side you can see the summary. Two to eight workers. 32 to 128 GB memory, 8 to 32 cores, 1 driver with 16 GB memory and 4 cores, the runtime selected, photon as well as we can select the photon acceleration, the node type and the cost 6 to 18 dBU per hour. Let us understand the policy first. There are 4 options unrestricted, personal compute, power user compute and legacy shared compute. A compute policy defines limits on the attributes available during the compute creation. You can get more information from the documentation. This is the Azure Databricks documentation to create and manage the compute policies. A policy is a tool that workspace admins can use to limit a user or group's compute creation permissions based on a set of policy rules. These are the benefits. Limit user to creating clusters with prescribed settings. Limit users to creating a certain number of clusters. Simplify the user interface and enable more users to create their own clusters. Control cost by limiting per cluster maximum cost. And enforce cluster scoped library installations. Here you will get all the information about creating and managing the compute policies. As of now we will go with the unrestricted policy. Then we can select the multi-node or single node cluster. As of now multi-node is selected. You can see the cost and other details here. Let us select single node cluster. The cost reduced. And these are the other details, driver and runtime. After that we have access mode, you can go with single user, shared and no isolation shared. For the single user, you can run SQL, Python, R and Scala workloads as a single user. And this is with access to data secured in Unity catalog. For the shared, multiple users can share the cluster to run SQL, Python and Scala workloads on data secured in Unity catalog. No isolation shared. Multiple users can share the cluster to run workloads in any language with no isolation between users. You can get more information from here. This is pointing towards Unity catalog. Single user access. When user runs a command on cluster with single user access mode enabled, that user's Azure Active Directory credentials are passed automatically to Spark allowing the user to access the data in Azure Data Lake storage without having to specify their credentials manually. So this is the user selected and we will go with the single user access mode. Then the performance. First we have Databricks runtime version under the performance. It selects the image that will be used to create the cluster. Let us see the details. Databricks Runtime Release Notes Versions and Compatibility Supported Databricks Runtime LTS Releases Version, Variants, Apache Spark Version, Release Date, End of Support Date 
all supported databricks runtime releases and so on from here you can select the databricks runtime version there are two options standard and machine learning we will select standard 15.4 lts that is long term support we have to select latest one this is the scala version for this 2.12 and spark 3.5 as well as we can select the photon acceleration photon accelerates modern apache spark workloads reducing your total cost per workload then we have workload type these are the workload types general purpose general purpose delta cache accelerated these are the options general purpose general purpose hdd memory optimized which is delta cache accelerated memory optimized memory optimized with remote hdd storage optimized with delta cache accelerated confidential general purpose confidential memory optimized compute optimized and gpu accelerated as of now these are not enabled we will select this one general purpose standard ds3 v2 this is the cheapest one you can see the cost 6 to 18 dbu per hour now select standard ds3 v2 cost is reduced from here you can select minimum workers and maximum workers this will be the range you can go with spot instances as well you have to use the spot instances to save the cost then the driver type by default same as worker as well as you can select other options and then enable auto scaling compute that automatically scales between the minimum and maximum number of nodes based on the load here you will get all the information about enabling the auto scaling these are the benefits of auto scaling with auto scaling azure databricks dynamically reallocates workers to account for the characteristics of your job and the auto scaling makes it easier to achieve high utilization and this is because you don't need to provision the compute to match the workload you can read this documentation for more information how auto scaling behaves auto scaling with pools auto scaling examples and so on from here you can specify the termination time by default it is 120 minutes when this is enabled the compute will terminate after the specified time interval of inactivity and this feature is best supported in the latest spark versions after that we have tags these tags are automatically added to cluster instances for tracking usage in your cloud provider here you can specify the tags let us see the automatically added tags vendor databricks creator this is me the cluster name that we specified cluster id it is generated after the cluster creation after the tags we have advanced options from here you can enable credential pass through for user level data access when user runs a command on cluster with credential pass through enabled that user's active directory credentials will be automatically passed through to spark allowing them to access the data in azure data lake storage generation 1 and generation 2 without having to manually specify the credentials in upcoming video we will see this option in practical after that we have these options spark here you can specify the spark config you have to enter your spark configuration to fine tune the spark jobs performance and here you can specify the environment variables certain spark configurations can be set via environment variables then the logging here you can specify the destination and compute log path all cluster logs will be delivered to cloud storage every 5 minutes on best effort basis we can see the more details from here after that in its scripts these are defined for the compute 
we will see these three options in more detail in upcoming videos so don't worry about that these are the advanced options so we successfully explored the azure databricks cluster configuration here i'll see you in the next video